Hello everyone, it's Digital Mr. Doyle, and we are here today to talk about fiscal policy. Before we start, we need to ask ourselves, what the heck is fiscal policy anyway? Put simply, fiscal policy is the government's attempt to maintain a healthy economy. It does this by making changes to the amount of money the government spends and uh, the taxes that it collects. Now, fiscal policy can either increase or decrease economic conditions through three types of policies. Contractionary policies, which seek to halt an expanding and out of control economy, or expansionary policies, which seek to expand a struggling economy. Now, I know this seems frustrating. Why would we want to stop an expanding economy from growing? I know it seems counterintuitive, but by the end of this video, I'm sure you'll understand why sometimes a growing economy might not be a good thing. Expansionary policies are what the government will use to help an economy that is in poor or failing health. Now, these are usually used when the business cycle is in contraction or recession. And when this happens, the government does two things. It decreases taxes and it increases spending. Here's an example. Let's pretend you have a job making $200 a week. Of that $200, we'll say that the government takes about 50% of it in taxes, so about $100. Let's also pretend that the business cycle is in the middle of a recession, so the $100 you have left over isn't enough to get by. What the government would do in that situation is lower taxes and take only about 10% of your $200, giving you more money to be able to get by and help support the economy. With all that extra money not going to taxes, your demand for things like computers, new headphones, a new car would increase dramatically. Then, the money you spend on cars, headphones, and computers goes to those producers and they can give their workers more money, helping the economy to grow. Let's look at it this way. Let's say that unemployment is abnormally high. No matter where you look, you just cannot find work. What the government can do in that situation is try to find new projects that can put lots of people back to work, giving them a steady paycheck. Let's say the government decides that the Lincoln Memorial needs to be updated, creating about a thousand new jobs. Just like we saw earlier, extra income increases your demand for something like a car or a computer, and that money then goes to producers. Those producers then use that money for the things that they want. The cycle repeats, eventually helping the economy to get back on track. Now we also need to talk about contractionary policies. These are used when the economy is growing too fast. When if the economy is growing too fast, if the GDP shoots up and there's more money out there for people to use, inflation occurs, making that dollar in your pocket almost worthless. What the government would do at this point is do two things. Increase taxes and decrease public spending. For example, let's pretend that you get public assistance from the government to buy food every week. In order to get the economy back on track, the government cuts back on that spending and you no longer get that money. What happens in that situation is the $20 in your wallet becomes instantly more valuable. You spend 15 of those dollars on food, decreasing your demand for other things like movie tickets. This lowers GDP and inflation since less money is being exchanged. Important to note that fiscal policy is not always the best. Sometimes when taxes are raised but the government doesn't stop spending, people get angry. Also, if the government stops taxing at a high rate, it limits the things it can do, like paying off debt, paying government employees, or starting improvement policies. In the end, fiscal policy really boils down to the idea of the government stepping in to maintain the health and stability of the economy. The main goal of fiscal policy is to promote economic growth, stable prices, and low unemployment. And the government does this by setting expansionary or contractionary policies to help properly regulate the economy. That's it for this lesson. Until next time, I'm Mr. Doyle. Thanks for stopping by.